Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Devs. Uh, welcome to Pork Like. Oh man, this is like I think episode 31. We've been at it for a long time, but now we're getting to the good stuff. Um, apologies if this is getting really hard, but as I said at the beginning of the episode uh, or of the, of the series, you know, we're gonna start with obvious stuff, you know, how to make a character move enough and, and stuff like that. Um, but now we, we now it gets serious. No more messing around. Now we are actually doing the, the hardcore programming. And these are like some really, really choice um, tricks that we're using here. Okay, so last episode to summarize, we um, finished up our uh, tool set to be able to recognize signatures of tiles, like recognize what kind of tiles surround them and express them in a binary number, zeros and ones, uh, expressing the, certain, the tiles surrounding a tile. And also we created, um, uh, we even created capabilities of actually very, very powerful comparison tools. Well, not very powerful comparison tools, seem so awesome. It's just like we create a comparison tool that allows us even to ignore certain bits. So we can, um, uh, you know, cover uh, multiple, uh, multiple permutations, multiple combinations of walls and tiles with just one comparison. Good. And we already started like dipping into testing it a little bit and, and doing a bit of a like a, you know, this is our can carve function that kind of like highlights which tiles, the gray ones, the, the bluish ones, are the ones where it's okay for our worm to carve through. So now it's time to actually do our worm. We actually want to create our maze worm. The maze worm is responsible for carving through, through walls. Okay. So, um, how are we going to do this? Um, so, if is walkable, if, if it's not walkable and can carve, something like this, we could even um, instead of the inbounds, if let's make it um, is walkable, because that uh, includes um, inbounds. If not, is walkable. Walk um, wait a minute, but inbounds makes it not walkable. So we have to actually do in inbounds x y and not is walkable. So can carve actually takes care of the walkable part. Um, so here if can oh hey, wait a minute, this is the maze worm. So right now this is going to be two step process. Uh, we already talked about it a little bit. So first, we need to have starting position for the worm. So we have to create a bunch of candidates for our worm to start digging. And that's going to be a slightly different signature than the signature that we need to find out if the dog, um, if the dog, if the worm can continue digging there. So, um, so we're going to do something like this: if uh, is walk, if in. No, we don't have to check inbounds because we actually know that this is inbounds. So just if not is walkable uh, x, y, and um, get sig x, y equals, and then it's like 0, b, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. We can, we can make this a bit shorter, it's 255. Then, because that's binary to, uh, to normal numbers. Uh, okay, so that, that means this, this is the right signature and that means this should be a candidate for our worm to start. So let's make a list of candidates. We already did kind of like a similar pattern before. Uh, list of candidates, um, then we're adding this. So we're gonna go add uh, canned. Um, and again, the same problem here. Let's go with underscores. So the underscores are, you don't have to do this, um, but I think it makes it a bit confusing where it's like X equals X and Y equals Y. It's like, what, what X, what Y? So I like to do it. So X equals underscore X, Y equals underscore Y. Okay, so now we added a bunch of candidates to our, this is where our worm can start list. Now we're gonna actually do the actual worm. So let's call this, worm or do worm or dig worm dig worm um, 
Oh yeah, by the way, uh, so we're gonna go um, local c equals getRind. That's, that was the tool function that gets a random entry in an array. getRind can't. And then we're gonna go if, we, may, we might wanna check if hashtag can't uh, is greater than zero, then So digworm uh, c.x, c.y. That might be a very com complicated way of picking a random spot on the map to start digging. Um, but as you will see, like I think it's better than just like picking random spots and then seeing if they're walkable or if they're in something that can be dug with a dig digital uh, with a with a worm. Um, because um, again, that's something I know mentioned in the rooms. You first of all, you don't really see if there's any spots left for the worm to dig. You kind of like hope that that the uh, you know you do like random like shoot randomly in, in spots, and then after a certain amount of fail you would give up. But that might still be a, an area that the random number generator just never actually uh, rolled. Um, and um, so yeah, it's more of a elaborate thing, but it's kind of, kind of more thorough. Um, okay, so with this is now we have to now do the dickworm function. So let's do the dickworm function function dickworm. Like so. Perfect. Perfect. And we're gonna do a stupid worm. The stupidest worm. Oh my gosh, this worm is so stupid, I don't even. Whew. So we're gonna go a local direction, and the direction is always gonna be. Um, so the directions are again the same as, as in Pico 8. I want the worm to always go south. <laughs> so it's gonna be um, one, two, three, four. That's gonna be direction number four down for uh, so that's like uh, the button plus one. <laughs> oh my gosh it's so confusing um this is the direction right so y is gonna be plus one and uh, x is zero uh, the fourth entry in our dear x and dear y array like this and so um then we're gonna have some uh, variables that store uh you know how many I to, uh, how many units in y or x direction we should move depending on this direction. So we're going to go dx equals um, dx dr and dr y dr. So far, nothing, nothing too, too special. Okay, and so now here we're just going to see. Um, first of all, uh, let us set. Um, and set, let us set the starting location of the dig worm to zero. So we're gonna go x, y, uh, one, uh, two, to walkable, right? We're gonna set it to walkable. Okay. And then we're gonna see um, what the next location is. And if that's diggable, then um, we're gonna just continue there. And if not, we're just not, not gonna do that. So we're gonna go uh, if um, can carve. Uh, x plus dx, y plus dy, then else. Um, actually, let's do it like this. Um, let's make it. Sorry, I'm, I'm changing things around because uh, I'm like look, always always looking at my other code. Let's go do a repeat loop until repeat until. And until can carve uh, x plus dx and y plus d equals false uh, until not can carve. We're just going to continue until we cannot carve anymore. Or until our mask tells us this next tile that we are about to carve into is actually something we shouldn't carve. We might be breaking through a room, or we actually reach the edge of the map. Um, so the only thing for us left to do is be like. Um, um hmm. Um Mom, let's do a while. Yeah, let's do a while. That's better. <clears throat> and so it's going to be uh, x uh, equals um, plus equals dx and y plus equals dy. 
I did it this way around because um, uh, if, if I checked at the end, uh, it, it was difficult to implement this part where we actually um, changing the position of our worm. It was difficult to impl implement so that it wouldn't like um, do a step in the first time it goes through this loop. I want the first time it goes through this loop, I want to carve out the starting position of the worm and then change the position and then, you know, and then continue going. I think this is okay. Oh, you could also, um, yeah, I, we could also do this. So, so let's do like this, Re repeat. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just like feeling myself into this a little bit. Repeat, let's do it, let's do it like this. That's, that might be until, uh, is it until? Even more subscriptions, oh my gosh. <laughs> Somebody discovered my channel. <laughs> Uh, until um, can not can carve right. Okay, so this is this is my my dig worm now. Again, it's a very very boring dig worm, but we're gonna we're gonna see how this works. Okay, so immediately something doesn't work. Um, right here, this should be oh my gosh, this should be a curly brackets. Nothing happened. <laughs> Oh, wait, there's a worm. You see that? You see this little, you see those two? That, that's our worm. There is also a worm, but it started at a bad spot. That, that down there in the corner is a worm. This is a worm. Yeah, those worms are not starting at good positions. So let me see, why not? Why are they starting at bad positions? It's what I'm thinking about. X, Y, if it's walkable and get sig X, Y. This is, everything is correct here. X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. Oh, wait, there's a, I mix up X and Y. So let's see how that works. Okay, there's a line there, that's good. Oops, I did not learn, okay. So here's a nice line there, there's a nice line. Yes, now this one behaves correctly. You see it carved a, a neat um, straight corridor and between the rooms, that's exactly what we're looking. So the worm is not not trying to dig, dig dig through the room. That's why I was concerned just before we had the bug because the worm was kind of like connecting with rooms. But now it's no longer, no longer connecting with rooms. It, it carves out its own kind of like little little corridor. Cool. So now what we want to be doing is we want to maybe um, we want it to. Um, when it hits a spot where it cannot carve anymore, it should maybe change direction. Is what I'm thinking. So this is gonna be our more intelligent worm. Wait a minute, before we do that, let us make a worm that starts carving in a random direction. Ooh. So it's gonna be plus FLR RND um, four. So it's gonna be one, one number from, from one to, uh, to four. It will pick a random direction from one, um, from one to four. And um, it will start carving in that direction. Let's see how that works. Ooh, look at this. Okay, there's one there. There's one here. Uh, there's down here one. Yeah, now, now they're going like in random directions. Sometimes sideways, sometimes downwards, sometimes upwards. There's one along the screen edge, good. Not spectacular, I have to admit. Okay, so this is now the part where we actually start thinking, okay, so maybe we can make it so that the worm changes direction when it encounters a wall. When it encounters a wall, okay? Let's try that. So we're gonna, so instead of like having the until here, we're gonna go if, if can carve x plus dx, y plus dy, equals false. Or let's go with like if not can carve. We, if we can't carve anymore, then. And now odd things happen, right? Now it's like, ooh, then we have to actually think about maybe maybe, uh, maybe picking a different direction now. So um, again, it's gonna be like a similar pattern that we had before. We're gonna check all of the neighboring tiles, all of them. And we're gonna see uh, which of the tiles surrounding us are actually carvable. And then we're gonna pick uh, one of the directions that from, from the candidates that is carvable. 
Okay, so we're gonna go something like a for i equals one to four do end, and then we're gonna go if um, can carve uh, x plus this y plus this and instead of dr we're gonna plug in the i here so this is a carvable spot uh, then and and now we're gonna have to have like a, again a, a little little array of candidates again candidates can um, equals this and again we're gonna do add can and this time around we're just gonna add well actually we can add all of these so it's go we're gonna be um, d equals d uh, i so the direction is going to be i um, dx equals this is it necessary we might it might not be necessary we're just gonna actually we're just gonna add the i in here it's fine we're just going to add the direction that is going to be that's actually an acceptable direction so after we loop through all of the directions uh, surrounding our worm, all of the cardinal directions, and we check for coverable spots and we fill them in this candidate array. So now we're gonna see if the, um, if the array is, uh, contains actually something. So we're gonna go if canned, hashtag canned equals zero, then that's bad. There is no good candidates. That means the worm has to stop now. So we're gonna go um, D equals zero. Uh, this is going to be our dr equals zero. Uh, this is going to be a sign for this loop to stop. So we we'll loop until dr equals zero. Direction zero is, is means like, oh, oh, this is not good. Else. And here we're going to go dr equals get rend. Again, get random entry from an array. Can't. So all that's left to do for us is um, to set the dx and dy. So let's go dx. Uh, I'm not sure if we actually need the dx here, I guess, right? We could just immediately plug in them in here and in here. Yeah, let's let's just not, not even save the dx and dy. We're just gonna grab them immediately from the array. I don't think there is gonna be less something like this. And then here is gonna be dx. DOI. that allows us to not care about this bad boy and yeah good so now our worm will go straight in a random direction until it encounters some kind of obstacle and it, until it encounters a wall that it should that it should not um, carve then it looks at the surrounding tile, uh, tiles and looks a direction that it can actually carve through. Then it, then it continues in that direction until it hits an obstacle and so forth. So let's see how that works. Obviously it doesn't work because, because why, why should it? Um, all right, so if dr equals zero, then obviously we have an issue there. Uh, how do we do it? What's the best way for us to do this? You know what? Let's do it. So we know that the, it goes only cardinal direction. So I'm going to go if it's five or even better. Like let's, let's take the final entry. The final entry is eight. So if it's the eight entry, then we're, then we're going to stop. Okay. So you see, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so I guess what happened now, the worm started down there at this L shape. It went against the wall. This is what this is what I'm thinking. Uh, against against the wall, then went up all the way to our where our player is. Then then it encountered another wall. Then it went right, encountered the um, the the long room, and then it went downwards until it was almost at its, its starting location. I think that it's the case because if it if it um, were other way around, then it would probably still continue carving towards this room. Let's let's try a bunch of other uh, combinations. Okay, so that's a worm that encountered a location that it cannot actually uh, continue carving and stop carving. Here's a below of an L shape. Oh, there is actually a nice little 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 loop that it did here. Oops. Um, yeah. So now we have like a, a corridor. This is actually a really good corridor that, that, that they carved. 
So we have a worm doing corridors now, at least one, one corridor. Good. So let us now continue expanding this. So now I want to have um, not just one worm. I want to have like a lot of worms. <laughs> so let's do something like this. Let's do another loop around all of this. All of this. So maze worm is going to repeat until can't, hashtag can't equals zero. Um, you could probably even save an, a loop until it's the last candidate because if um, can't equals one then that, that means we placed our worm in this final candidate and that means if we go through this again you know there's not gonna be a reason so if can candidate equals one uh, we stopping this this entire process uh, there's one problem here I want um, yeah no this is this is everything is okay here Seems to be a bit more elaborate because we loop through this entire map every time we want to place a new worm. But I think there's not going to be that many worms, so it's not going to slow down our process too much. Oops. Okay, th there's a problem. This is not good. Maybe some kind of infinite loop? That could be it. Maybe. Um, let's go smaller equals one. Aha. Uh -huh. So you see now there's some worms digging, digging tunnels between our, our, our rooms. There's like loose interconnected little hallways. And you can imagine like if we break through those hallways, we're going to have like a, like a nice labyrinth going on. And this should be now even more evident if we have less rooms, because right now we're creating five rooms and they fill up the space pretty nicely. But this leaves little room um, for, um, for labyrinth, for the maze. So I'm going to create less rooms and you can see now there's a lot more space for the maze to be happening. So there's actually a lot better percentage of spaghetti to the meatballs, so to speak. <laughs> so now we have like the spaghetti and the meatballs in between us and the individual rooms. Good. This looks good. I like it. Okay. So now we have spaghetti, we have rooms, we have the worm. Um, there's one little, last little thing I don't want to fix. And like if you look at the, at the tunnel, let's make it, let's make very, very few rooms. Let's just make one room. If you look at those hallways, they're very long and straight hallways. That's not very exciting. That's not the most exciting hallway in the world. It's kind of like, you know, it's, it would be interesting if uh, our worm was a bit of a more, had a bit more sense for aesthetics. That would be that would be lovely, if that's what that was the case. Um, so let us let us teach him some aesthetics, um, and we're gonna teach him some aesthetics by saying like, every now and then, the worm will take a random turn. It's gonna be like a little bit twisty. It's not gonna go always straight. If it, if it even like it's, it will be just sometimes that change direction, even though maybe the next tile is walkable. Um, so let me see. Um, I uh, let me see what percentage I, I figured out was a good percentage. Okay. So here, not walkable and um, wait a minute. That's that's not wrong. That's not right. Here, this is where we change direction. If we re realize that the re direction in the tr if we realize that the direction in which we are going is um, is no longer sustainable if the next tile will actually break through somewhere or if r and d is smaller than 0 0.5 50 percent chance for the worm to to change its direction so now you see like a bit of a stair pattern going on right you see like these stair patterns I don't like the stair patterns though. That's very unesthetic. I don't like the worm to be changing direction in every turn. So maybe uh, something I want to add here is like, I'm going to say um, the, the chance is 0 0.5, but there's only like every second step is so, uh, we're going to make it so that if they change direction through whatever reasons, that we'll try to do at least two steps before it changes direction again. That way we don't that way we don't have like these kind of stir patterns. So you don't just make one step, change direction, one step, change direction, but it's like two steps, change direction, two steps, change direction. 
something like this. So I'm going to make a new variable called step. Uh, it's going to start at zero. And down here, we're going to go step plus equals one. And then when we change direction, we're going to go step equals zero. And then here, when we're checking for the random number generator, we're going to put this into equations and into, into parentheses. And we're going to go step um, modulo 2 equals 0. Modulo 2 equals 0. So again, it's only every second step is where we're actually going to take a turn. We could also say a step is smaller than 0, technically. Maybe that would make more sense. Hmm. Yeah, let me let me let me say if step greater than greater equals two. Yeah, that might make more sense. Maybe let's let's try that. Um, there's some, some problem here. I'm not sure what the problem is. Maybe ah. Uh, uh? It seems like the direction. Oh wait, uh, did I did I put an M in here? I did put an M in here accidentally. Yeah, that was the problem. Okay. <sighs> okay. So you see now there and the the hallways look a bit more wormy now. They kind of like make more turns a little bit. Sometimes they're still like very straight, but they attempt to be more and more creative. For example, you see up on the top on the top edge there is like this this loop that goes like without reason up and down. And, you know, sometimes they're still straight. You cannot catch, avoid this. Sometimes, you know, you just get those, especially if the room is very long and it has to like adhere to the edge of the room. But, um, but yeah, we're getting some better results here. Let me make sure that um, maybe we're going to do step is greater than two. Let's try that. It's more chaotic. It's fine. It's fine. So you see now the spaghetti is kind of like more mixed up and, and it does, does more. Although here, look at this, there is still a kind of like a step function here. But I guess that this could have been a result of just bumping against uh, an already existing. Yeah. Yeah, this looks good. I like it. Spaghetti. Mom spaghetti. All right, so we now we made worms, spaghetti, and meatballs, and um, we can now bump up the number of rooms. Again, I'm gonna go to four. It seems like um, I wanna have a good amount of meatballs in our spaghetti, but also wanna have enough rooms for spaghetti. Um, so yeah, something like this. Cool. This is good. So um, this was the worm function. Uh, the next function we're gonna do now, the next step in our procedure is gonna be now, um, we wanna connect everything. We have meatballs, we have spaghetti. The meatballs and spaghetti have to be melt together a little bit. So we wanna be able to walk down a hallway and kind of like the way I do it right here, bump, make a wall in the hallway so it kind of breaks through uh, to the actual room and then pop make sure that the rooms exit into the hallway so everything is interconnected so I can access every f oh that was bad and so I can access every free tile from every other free tile uh, so everything is you know there, there's like a the, everything is intermeshed with each other because right now the way this generates obviously every little space every hallway and every room are completely separate from each other and you cannot you cannot walk like I cannot exit this room right so we're gonna have to figure out some kind of uh, algorithm that understands which areas are separate from each other and figures positions where it's it might be worthwhile to make a breakthrough so kind of like exactly the opposite of what we're trying to do where we're trying to carve out spaces without making any breakthroughs but that's something that comes up comes up next episode uh, i wanted to remind you i'm not wearing any kind of like special t-shirts today this is like a game of thrones nerdy kind of t-shirt but there is a t-shirt storm down in doobly doo there's also been the, going to be the code for um for this episode for that that you see here and 
And uh, also something that I will include now from now on is a lot of people, uh, well, not at least one person has been doing a really great job from Discord. That was OMG OMG. Wait, correction, OMG Mog. And uh, he's been doing a really great job uh, taking actually all of the Pico 8 files that I put in doobly-doo and putting everything up on a big uh, GitHub registry. So if you like working with GitHub, I will post the GitHub link as well. So you can see like all of the individual episodes are going to be individual comments. So you can see like what changed and what didn't change. And of course, as always, uh, you should hang out in our Discord channel where OMG Mock and other people are hanging out and discussing the things that we do here on these episodes and doing their own twists and, and, and tweaks and, and hacks. Uh, so join us in Discord. See you next time around, guys. Bye, bye.